Hello everyone. In this episode of the English Hour, we'll talk about artificial intelligence and humans, and how humans can be friends with AI and AI tools. This might sound a bit weird at first, because、um, if you told me that humans and I, AI systems could be friends maybe 10 years ago, I'd call you crazy. I mean, that would totally seem unattainable, because, you know, humans are special creatures. Humans have abilities that are not matched by other species. And it would seem very difficult that a machine, a man made machine, could match. Human level of intelligence and skill and reasoning. But here we are in 2024, or almost in 2025, by the way. But now there are smart and intelligent systems that can match and, in many cases, surpass human ability. And to me, that is breathtaking. That is incredible. And it would not be an understatement that. I've probably spent more time in the past couple of months talking to AI, texting AI assistants,、uh, having conversations, having brainstorming sessions with artificial intelligence systems. And that at first looks very weird. Like, why would a person talk to AI assistants all the time? But here is the kicker these AI systems have immense power. And ability. And beyond that, they are trained on millions of pages of books and data and stats and information. It's almost like talking to someone who has the knowledge of the entire human history. Of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but get the point. For example, systems like Claude,、uh, ChatGPT, and open source models such as Gwen and I think Metalama systems, they're incredible. You can literally carry the entire knowledge of the human history in your pocket. And you can talk to philosophers, writers, scientists, marketers, business people all the time. 724 or 24 7, however you call it. Normally, when you need guidance on a very specific topic, You might not always be able to reach the right person to get the right kind of information and advice. But these AI systems can really help. They can point you in the right direction. You can ask them questions, a lot of questions, and they will not judge you. That's, that's an interesting point when it comes to education because sometimes when you're a learner, when you're getting started, you might feel a little, little bit embarrassed. Or you might not be able to ask the questions you need to ask. Either you don't feel comfortable, or maybe you're in a classroom environment and you're a little bit shy, or something like that. Or you might hear looking like kind of stupid. I mean, you're not stupid, of course, but you know, sometimes people have that fear. But with the AI systems, you can talk as much as you want, you can ask as many questions as you want. It's like having a personal tutor. 724 or 24 7. I think that is the more natural thing. 24 7. And that's incredible. When I was doing my master's at Bozici,、um, I would go to the library and look at the immense selection of books. And I was like, imagine having all the knowledge in those books. That would be incredible. Imagine being able to read and synthesize. And connect the ideas from thousands of books. That would make you really smart because knowledge requires understanding, and understanding requires being able to connect different ideas, different viewpoints, different data points. When you can do that, you get a broader, a more deep view of the world and problems. You can be a better problem solver, you can literally change the world. At a faster pace. And I think AI enables that because what would take a person maybe months and years can be done by AI systems in a couple of days. And that is incredible. I don't think a lot of people have noticed this. Like, of course, people in the field, people who work on these kinds of systems, 
see the potential because it's part of their day-to-day -day job, but the average person, I think, has not really grasped the intensity of the sort of intellectual earthquakes that are coming. And it is a bit scary at the same time because, you know, AI systems, smart devices, will certainly change the nature of work. Are governments and societies ready for this reality? Are we ready for a future where most of the work will be done by AI agents or robots? What will be the function of people, regular people, in, in such a world system? Then how do people make money? Uh, how do governments collect taxes? How the society works? How the welfare system works? These are all very complex questions. And the advances in AI are so fast that I think the society and the regulatory frameworks do not have enough time to catch up. It's like they're, they're playing catch up, but they are far, far behind. And there is another inter interesting use of AI systems. For example, right now, due to advances in text-to-speech processing and voice cloning, you can literally clone your voice. You can give an AI system, in some cases, maybe 10, 20 second clips of your voice, and it will match that sound. It will sound like you do. And if you want a high quality output, you can train the system with a few hours of clean audio data of your recordings, and then you'll get an AI system, an AI assistant that talks the way you do with the right intonation and will even make the mistakes you make. That's incredible. You can basically copy yourself. It's like having an army of yourself. And there are other applications of this technology. For example, imagine you have a loved one who passed away couple of years ago, or maybe tens of years ago, decades ago. You can collect the voice samples, feed them into an AI system, and you can recreate that person's voice. You can talk to that person. And in some advanced cases, you can feed the thoughts, the writings of that person to an AI system and recreate that person. I mean, of course, it's not recreating, but it's like building a system, building an AI agent that sounds like and that thinks like that person. It's like basically you're copying a person in a virtual world, in a virtual format. And it really blurs the boundaries of reality and the virtual world. What is real? What is not real? I mean, I find all of this sort of mesmerizing. And honestly a very scary at the time at the same time because it's very difficult to grasp the changes that might take place as a result of these these technologies but i i guess in the next 10 years the world will be a much different place and we're again in an age of transformation and this transformation is taking place a lot faster than the previous ones. This is like an exponential form of transportation. Transformation. Well, of course, there might be some transportation involved, but this is uh, an immense transformation. So AI systems, they can be friends for people, or they can be tutors that are available 24 seven around the clock for you, for your, for your kids, right? Or you can build a persona you like and talk to that person, ask questions, have interactions with that person. But beyond that, the AI systems are increasing their abilities in different modalities. For example, text understanding is very common. AI systems are now able to process thousands of pages of information very quickly understand it, analyze it, summarize it, find information, answer the questions, and so on. As a modality, I think text has been solved, written text. AI systems can deal with that very easily. And in the last few years, they have made 
immense advances in vision and audio. For example, the audio models by companies such as OpenAI and Eleven Labs, PlayHD. There are, I mean, various companies producing text-to-speech models or voice cloning models, and they're doing a great job. As I said, some companies are able to copy your voice and create a replica of your voice. And in many cases, it is reaching human level level performance. Additionally, as I said, vision was difficult. I mean, vision is of course difficult. The real world is very messy. It's difficult to get clear data. But right now, AI systems are able to monitor the real world, uh, monitor your screen, and act based on what they see. They can read text from images. They can analyze real world photos, count objects, and detect objects. The opportunities in applications are literally unlimited. And when you combine a very high level of intelligence with the real world visual understanding, object detection, and so on, with extremely clear voice, I think you can build human-like robots. It is more attainable than ever before because you've, we've basically solved the brain's part. Now it's it's a problem of integration. It's a matter of integration. Once the voice, um, text, vision capabilities are integrated into a robot, into a device that can interact with the real world, you'll get a, I guess, a machine, a robot that is at least as capable as humans, and in many cases, probably a lot more capable. And that's a bit scary. And I don't know the implications. I mean, of course, I have some guesses, but the implications of such a system, of such a transformation, would be huge. So AI is both promising and a bit scary at the same time. We need to learn or we need to develop strategies to use AI for the benefit of the humankind because it has the potential to move beyond human control. And it seems all the more likely the more I, I learn about it. For example, right now, at least in computer systems, you're able to code agents that can act on their own, that can respond to interactions in online systems. It's like giving life to an AI system. As I said, these are very complex and intricate topics, and I'm sure as time passes, we'll learn more about the mysteries of these fields. But for now, I am hoping to remain optimistic. And I mean, I'm of course optimistic because in a way, these systems can take human potential, human potential much, much ahead. It can greatly enhance human potential. For example, imagine this, you've had an accident and you've lost your voice. If we have your sound recordings, voice recordings from pr previous years, we can train a device that can copy your voice and help you talk when you're not able to physically talk. Or imagine you can't see, you're blind, and these AI systems can understand the world around you and then describe it and help you interact with the real world. Or imagine creating smart, self-aware and environment-aware robots that can do jobs that are very difficult or dangerous for humans. In such cases, these systems can certainly enhance human life in, in great ways. But as I said, there are of course possible downsides too, and we will have to grasp the, the complexity and the ramifications of this situation. Okay, I guess that's a lot of food for thought for today. I'll see you in another episode.